All right, let's bring it together and see if you can combine a whole bunch of different topics together. So here we have some radicals and you're asked to subtract them. So remember, you can do this. Just start with for my eyes only column and simplify the roots and then combine it together. So go ahead, pause the video here, do the problem on your own, and then we'll come and discuss it together. Assuming you have come back from pausing the video, let's start with recalling fifth root of b to the fifth. Remember what that is? Fifth root is the same as exponent of 1 over 5. So here we have b to the fifth, b to the fifth over 5, giving b to the 1. Or just remember when you have roots, fifth root means your b's are going to come out in groups of 5. So 5 b's multiplied together will come out as 1 b. So that's fifth root of b to the fifth in case you don't remember. But we have fifth root of b to the sixth. So that's same as b to the five times another b. So the b to the fifth, fifth root will give you a b on the outside. And then you'll have a b left on the inside. And then there's also a two on the outside. So if you were to simplify this, then you'll have two b, fifth root of b, minus 11 b, fifth root of b. You can see that b, Fifth root of b is your unit, so that means we can combine together to give you a negative 9b fifth root of b. So you can see how a whole bunch of topics came together. Roots and simplifying with subtraction that you've been doing so far. All right, let's see what we can do for the next problem. So here's our problem, and if your gut reaction after looking at it was negative and you felt like, oh God, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. If that was your original reaction, you know better by now. Remember what we're training you here. No negatives. In this class, you're going to turn everything into something positive. It is okay to feel overwhelmed and that you cannot do something, but we are giving you some techniques to overcome that. What are those techniques? Let's recall one at a time. So one thing at a time, stay positive, don't go into that negative space, be mindful, breathe and focus. So if you felt overwhelmed, just pause the video, just step back, take three deep breaths, breathing in and out, soft inhale, Soft exhale. Don't even look at the problem. Just bring your focus back to your body and your breath so you don't feel overwhelmed. And bring your focus back to the problem. First, make sure you're not distracted. No TV, no cell phone, no friends. Just be focused on this problem. If you do not have time to focus on this problem right now, or the mental capacity to handle this, just pause the video here, and then we will come back together. All right, so now that you are mindful, what does one thing at a time mean? Do you remember we did this with addition problems? When you feel overwhelmed, as a mathematician, you say, okay, that's okay, just regroup. And let's cover everything that's causing us stress. So part of mathematics, the reason it becomes difficult is because you have to have working knowledge of so many concepts all at once. So if you could actually visualize your head, all of the math concepts in it, this is how it might look. So inside your head, you have like a filing system, you have a files, stored away in a file cabinet, which is your head. Whenever you're solving a problem, you have to open that file cabinet and figure out what knowledge from those files you need. There are several concepts here. We know how to add and subtract like terms. We need to remember that nth root of x to the power n is x, so that's all the radical stuff. We also need to know what mth root of x to the power n means. 
There are many, many concepts involved, and that's one of the reasons why people can feel overwhelmed. So unless you practice and practice and practice, the working knowledge that you need access to that should immediately get triggered as soon as you see a problem only can happen by practice. When you see an instructor or somebody else doing the problems, it means they have practiced hundreds of times, and so that's why it's coming out fluently and possibly with less mistakes. So when you're first learning, be willing to figure out, uh-oh, I need to dig deep into my head, figuring out which topics to use, and that is okay. This is the training you need. So just keep practicing, and it, you will get there. All right, so let's get back to our problem here. So let's focus on this first term here. Do you recognize this? In the previous problem, in the form I is only column, remember how we worked and simplified fifth root b to the sixth? So that would be a b, fifth root of b. There was a two on the outside in the previous problem. But in our case, we have 15a on the outside. So we will have 15a and then a b, fifth root of b, which simplified our fifth root b to the sixth. So there's nothing new here because we already did that in the previous problem. All right, let's take a look at our second term then. So here we have our second term. Can you pause the video here and see if you can just simplify that part? Because now we have cube root. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Just like the fifth root, now you have cube root which means b to the third will come out as 1b. And then how many extra b's will be left inside? Can you tell us? So we have 11a, a b, because b to the third came out as a b, escaped the cube root. But two b's, b squared, were left on the inside. So now we can do one term at a time. And then we'll see what to do after that. So no need to rush ahead. Be in the present moment and just one thing at a time. So here we have 7 square root 3a to the third. Well, square root 3 cannot be simplified. a to the third, a squared, square root of a squared will be 1a. So we will have 7a. And then one extra a will be left inside in inside the square root. All right, negative 2b cube root of a cubed b squared. Cube root of a cubed is a. So that one a will come outside. So then we'll have negative 2ab cube root b squared. Whether you write b times a or a times b, it's the same. Do you remember why that is? because our multiplication is commutative property, right? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Oh, look at that. Nothing to do there, because a b is lonely by itself inside the root. There's nothing that it can do to escape, so it will stay. Last term, so we have a square root 3a. Again, nothing to do there, so it will stay as is. Look at that. Something that looked overwhelming when you look at one piece at a time, then becomes not so overwhelming. All right, now we color coded it so that you can see which units are together. So we have 15ab, fifth root of b, minus 6ab, fifth root of b. So 15 minus 6, what do you think that will give you? That's 9, 9ab, fifth root of b. Negative 11a, b cube root b squared minus 2ab cube root b squared. That will give you negative 13ab cube root b squared. Here we have 7a square root 3a and a 1a square root 3a, which will give you 8a square root 3a. So again, like terms, 15 minus 6 gives you the 9. That's the first term. Negative 11 minus the 2 will give you the negative 13 second term. And the last term is because you have 7 plus 1 or 8 of these. Again, 
If this is causing you stress, just pause the video, rewind, watch it over and over and practice more problems. That will come right after this. Let's see if we can continue to expand our notion of subtraction to rational numbers. Do you remember we, we um, recalled what rational numbers were when we did addition, but let's just do it again. Rational numbers are numbers of the form a over b, so fractions basically, right? a and b are integers, and b denominator has to be non-zero integer. So for example, if you have two sevens, this is how we've been visualizing two sevens, or two copies of one seventh. But we also have done equivalent fractions, and that means that you can just take the existing fraction and chop it into smaller bits. So if I divide everything into thirds, then that means I have now 21 pieces, 7 times 3, 21, and 6 of them are shaded. So that's the same as saying 2 times 3, 7 times 3, or 6 21st. If you have 5 sevenths and do the same thing, what do you think you'll get? You'll get 5 copies of 1 seventh, or 15 copies of 1 over 21, and that's because of similar reasoning. It'll be 5 times 3, 15, 7 times 3 is 21. So we can visualize rational numbers in this manner. This is just a review. So if you look at questions we want to ask is, how can we subtract rational numbers where both numerator and denominator are counting numbers, right? Because if we can do that, then we can extend the definition of subtraction to all rational numbers and also learn that uh, abstract idea and expand it to subtraction of rational expressions. So let's take a look at how we can subtract rational numbers. Some of you, this might be a breeze, and others, this might be a very important topic because it truly is the foundation for what's coming with rational expressions throughout the course in later sections. So our goal is to be able to subtract any two fractions of the type a over b minus c over d. And so if you recall, like two sevenths can be thought of as two copies of one seventh. So a over b can be thought of as a copies of one over b. And from it, you're subtracting c copies of one over d. That's what a over b minus c over d really means. Let's take a look at an example then. 5 sevenths minus 2 sevenths. We already know that I can think of 5 sevenths as 5 copies of 1 seventh minus 2 copies of 1 seventh. So if you look at an example here, our unit is 1 seventh. And so 5 sevenths would be these 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now minus means take away. Take away how much? 2 sevenths. So here's 2 sevenths. And I want to take it away. If you took it away, what's left is 3 sevenths, 3 copies of 1 seventh. So 5 copies of 1 seventh minus 2 copies of 1 seventh leaves you with 3 copies of 1 seventh or 3 sevenths. Take a look at 1 and 2 sevenths minus 4 sevenths. So let's just take a look at the unit. Unit is again 1 seventh, so one whole and 2 sevenths. That's 1 and 2 sevenths, subtracting 4 sevenths. So take away 4 copies of 1 seventh. So here is 4 sevenths. And now we're saying take those out. So remove them. So that is your final answer then. So 9 copies of 1 seventh minus 4 copies of 1 seventh gives you 5 copies of 1 seventh. Why were there 9 sevenths? Because 1 is all of these 7 pieces plus 2 more, so 9 sevenths. That's 9 copies of 1 sevenths is what we had. We removed 4 copies, so now you have 5 copies of 1 seventh. So our final answer is going to be 5 sevenths. All right, try this on your own. Pause the video and see what you can do. So 1 half is that. One third, so if I take the whole and break in one third, I would have to color this much of it, and I have to remove that. And whatever is left of the original color, which is right there, is our answer. But how much is that? It's unclear. So 
Let's take the whole and break it into the following units of one sixth. So half would be this much. A third would be that much. And so if you remove that third, you are left with good, one sixth. So a final answer, because you remove them from the original half, only this much piece is left, which is one sixth. So three copies of one sixth minus two copies of one sixth leaves you with one copy of one sixth. So that's our final answer then. All right, let's see if you can think of what to do here. Pause the video and see what you can do. Go ahead, try it on your own. So assuming you've come back, let's take a look. Here's four fifths. We want to remove from it half, and this green left over is our answer, but it's hard to tell what fraction it's of the whole. So let's reimagine four fifths a different way. Break it into smaller pieces. So let's say we break it into tenths. So four fifths would then be eight out of 10, like you see in this picture here. You want to remove half from this. And half, if you look, since our unit is one tenth, it would be this many pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Five tenths is the same as one half. And we want to remove them. So if you remove them, you are left with 3 tenths. So algebraically, we would write that as 8 tenths minus 5 tenths, which is 3 1 tenths or 3 tenths. So our final answer is going to be 3 tenths. All right, let's see if you can do this problem on your own. Choose whatever method. You don't have to do strip diagrams. Just see what you can come up with. Go ahead, pause the video, and try it on your own. All right, here we go. So 4 and 3 quarters minus 2 and a third. So clearly, 4 and 3 quarters means 4 complete plus an additional 3 quarters. You're taking away 2 complete and an additional 1 third. So we can rewrite that as 4 minus 2, because we know we can do that, and 3 quarters minus 1 third. So we have 4 minus 2 is 2. 3 quarters is 3 times 3 over 4 times 3. So we can have 9 twelfths. 1 third is the same as 4 twelfths. And then we can perform a subtraction because we now have uh, same units to do 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, which is 5 twelfths. And so our answer would be 2 and 5 twelfths. So you can see how. Making like units is what allows us to take care of rational numbers. All right, let's see if you can do rational expressions the same way. We have five copies of 1 over x plus 7 minus two copies of 1 over x plus 7. See what the final answer is. Go ahead, try it on your own. All right, hopefully you got 3 over x plus 1, right? 3 copies, 5 minus 2 of something. All right, try the next one. So we will have x and 5. So we need to have the same units, just like when we did addition. So now we're going to have to make 5x as our whole. So the whole is made up of 5x objects, and now you're going to have to multiply by 5 to make equivalent fractions for the first one, and x for the second term, giving us 15 minus 2x over 5x. So that's how you would work with rational expressions of this kind. So as you can see, uh, subtracting rational expressions requires us to multiply polynomials by polynomials. So let's just quickly look at a couple of examples that refresh your memory of multiplication. We saw multiplication distributes over addition. So what do you think happens if I have multiplication out here and over a subtraction? Do you think multiplication distributes over subtraction? Let's take a look. So in order to multiply, we would have to go 4 times 3x and 4 times negative 4. 
So 4 times 3x, well, we already know how to do that. That would be 12x. But what about 4 times negative 4? How do we process that? So let's take this to the side and look. We know that 4 times anything is 4 copies of that added together. So negative 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 4, which is going to give you a negative 16. We saw that when we were doing a visualization of subtraction on a number line. Okay, so 4 times negative 4 is a negative 16, or it's really the additive inverse of 4 times negative 4. So our final answer would be uh, 12x minus 16. So pause the video here and see what would happen to this. Negative 3 times 5x minus 3. Go ahead, pause the video. Let's see what you got. We have negative 3 times 5x, negative 3 times negative 3. So we'll end up with negative 15x minus 3 times negative 3. Again, let's explore negative 3 times negative 3. We have 3 times negative 3 is negative 3 minus 3 minus 3, which is negative 9. So if I have negative of that, that means additive inverse of that, which is 9. So therefore, our final answer was then negative 15x plus 9. So a negative number multiplied by a negative number will give me a positive number. Positive number times negative number is negative number. Similarly, negative number times positive number will be negative number. So really, what we are looking at is that multiplication also distributes over subtraction. All right, pause the video, and let's see if you can do the following. All right, so you will do 2x times 3x minus 2, negative 4 times 3x minus 2. So start out there, and then see what you got, and then we'll discuss it together. All right, so... Just like the previous two problems then, now you have two separate problems in the same combined together. So you're going to have 2x times 3x, 2x times negative 2, minus 4 times 3x, and minus 4 times negative 2. All right, so then 2x times 3x will give us 6x squared. 2x times negative 2 will give us negative 4x. Negative 4 times 3x will give us negative 12x. Negative 4 times negative 2 will give us a positive 8. Now just combine like terms. So 6x squared minus 16x plus 8 will be our final answer. We needed multiplication. We needed subtraction. We needed addition of polynomials. All of it in one problem. So you can see how things build on top of each other. All right, pause the video and see if you can do this next problem on your own then. So it's slightly different, but similar concept. So this second step in the part C here, you don't have to do it. You can just start the problem and multiply term by term using your distributive property of multiplication over addition and subtraction. So here we will have negative 3x times 5x, negative 3x times negative 3, negative 2 times 5x, and negative 2 times negative 3. I know sometimes people have names for such kind of multiplications, but I don't like saying FOIL or any other name like that because if you are stuck with three terms of polynomial times another polynomial, three terms multiplication, that method will fall apart. However, if you just stick with term by term, one thing at a time, negative 3x times 5x, negative 3x times negative 3, negative 2 times 5x, and negative 2 times negative 3. If there were more terms, you would just keep continuing term by term multiplication. So here we got negative 15x squared, because negative 3 times 5, and x times x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, and then x 
negative 2 times 5, negative 10, x, negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6. And then add like terms. So you have 9x minus 10x will give you negative x, and the rest stays as is. So it's very important to remember all the tools that you carry with you. So we're going to call this a mathematician's toolbox. And as you keep going forward, the number of tools in this box will keep increasing. You need to make sure that these tools are filed away in your head in a particular way so that when a trigger occurs, it automatically comes to your head so you can use it. So here we go, the mathematician's toolbox for now. We have addition, we have subtraction, multiplication, and exponents. There are many others, but for now, these are the ones that we used for these problems. So it's good to have a visual image of this kind in your head so that when you need it, it will come in handy. See if you can compute some of these subtractions. Let's see, negative 2 minus minus 45, which is like adding additive inverse of negative 45, which is 45. So this subtraction problem turned into negative 2 plus 45, which is 43. Try that on your own. So distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. What happens when you multiply here? x times x squared gives me x to the third. 3 times negative 5 will give me negative 15. So it will be negative 15 x to the third. Negative 4 times negative 5 will give me positive 20 and x squared. And then nothing we can do because these are unlike terms. So leave it. Again, distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. Negative 2 times 5x cubed. All right. And then subtract negative 2 times 4x. And then subtract negative 2 times 6. Multiplying together, negative 2 times 5 is 10, so 10x cubed. Uh, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And negative of that will give me 8x, because additive inverse. And here we want additive inverse of negative 12, which is positive 12. All right, go ahead. Use distributive property on your own and see what you can write that as. And then check your answer. So negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x. And negative of that would mean additive inverse, which is positive 8x. Again, we're using distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. See if you are getting each of those components or if you're making any mistakes. 3x times 5 will give me 15x. 3x, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. x times x is x squared. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8x. Then add like terms. So 6, negative 6x squared, there is nothing to add. 15x plus 8x will give me 23x. And then we have a negative 20. All right, pause the video here and see what you can do with these two problems. Use your knowledge from adding fractions. Go ahead, pause the video and see what you can do. What do you think we should do? Same thing that we did with addition, right? So let's just write our problems and see what we can do. Make equivalent fractions so that they both are out of the same fraction denominator because then we can just add or subtract the numerators. So first here, we're going to have to multiply that out. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Subtracting means additive inverses. So it's as if there is a little negative 1 there, and you're doing the distribution of multiplication over subtraction. So we have 2x 
minus, minus. We'll make it a plus 16x, so that will make it 18x. And negative 1 times 12 will be negative 12. It's important that you write everything out if you're having trouble seeing this so that you don't make any mistakes. All right, same thing here. Make common denominator and multiply it out. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times negative a is negative 2a. Again, there's like a little imaginary 1 here if you have struggling with the negatives. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 2a is positive 2a. So this one minus the 6 will give me a negative 5 because you have negative 6 plus 1. Here we have a negative a, negative 1 times negative 2a, which will give me positive 2a, minus an a will give me a plus a. Okay, look very, very carefully and see if you understand all the terms. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6, plus 1, gave me the negative 5. Negative 1 times negative 2a is positive 2a, minus the a will give me a positive a. If you're having trouble seeing that, write every single step down. All right, pause the video and try these two examples. Go ahead. Same principles, just additional practice. All right, let's multiply, distribute it out. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times 3 is plus 15x. x times 2 is 2x. x times negative x is negative x squared. Now we're combining like terms. 10x squared minus minus x squared. Minus minus, we make it a plus x squared. So that's a 1x squared and a 10x squared, giving you 11x squared. 15x minus 2x, which will give me... What? Good, 13x. So that's your final answer. Let's do the same process here. Again, distribute it out. So 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x. 2x times 3 is 6x. 2x times negative 4x will be negative 8x squared. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 4x is positive 4x. All right, now let's combine like terms. So 3x squared minus minus 8x squared, which is adding 8x squared and 3x squared, giving you 11x squared. Add the other like terms. So that's 6x minus 6x, so nothing. And then minus positive 4x, which will give you negative 4x. Do you see why that is? 6x minus 6x, nothing, 0. Then you're subtracting a positive 4x, which will give you a negative 4x. And minus minus 3, which will give you a plus 3. Pay very careful attention and see if you understand every single item here. If you are not sure, rewind and watch again.